Welcome back you male gold diggers, you're here with Goldberg and today we're going to be talking about another successful example of economic and financial dating. I previously did a blog post on Meghan Marker and of course society at large, the great unknown, the superior intellectuals, they always assume you're anti-woman, which is completely untrue. We're simply pointing out Prince Harry's the sucker, he's the one who's fallen into the beehive. Meghan Marker has achieved things that you couldn't even imagine in Camilla Parker Bowles wildest dreams. She got herself into the royal family despite the fact that she's at the fantastical Manosphereian wall, which I don't really believe exists, at least not for many women. Uh, she now has a kid which establishes blood and legal ties, and she also didn't have to go into the nice submissive role of being part of the royal family. She decided to move across the world and she's going to advance her entertainment and business career using that whole regalia behind her. So great credit to Meghan Marker. She's certainly not low IQ when it comes to navigating the currents of relationships. Now, as we traverse these treacherous lands, we have to consider the case of Kandachi Owens. And a lot of folks have asked me to discuss this person. I was like, yeah, it could be sort of fascinating. She has become the titular head of the black conservative American movement. And it always seems you know, every couple of years, the Republican Party trots out a new anointed leader of this renaissance to where black people are going to be voting over 50% for the Republicans somehow, just because, you know, liberals are the real racists, I guess. And other examples we've seen in the past, we had Michael Steele, then he turned out to be a liberal. Uh, Star Parker was there for a little bit. She faded. You had others such as uh, Herman. He had a fact 999. He's cheesing. He's rather pleasing. Kane, and we saw how that turned out. Um, who is the other one? Probably the worst example would be Mia Love. The Republicans practically wanted her to lead the party, and then she, of course, uh, showed her colors as a great progressive. And then you had Trump, who hired uh, Omelette Aroma, and you see the outcome in that case. The only person I say I think was legit was Alan West. And if you notice, when he started saying things the Republicans didn't like to hear, they shafted him really quickly. So you can tell who was... Uh, genuine and in it because they believed it and other people were essentially just opportunists and opportunists exist you know they abound no matter where you are so it's not to fault them i'm just saying in terms of really believing in a particular point of view but let's go down into kandachi owens and her past and then get a sense of who she is and what she's been able to accomplish so she was raised in stamford connecticut by her grandparents because her parents divorced and she was sent some wacist phone calls that were traced to a car with the son of the future governor, Donnell Malloy, because the Democrats are that way. So they sued the State Board of Education and got about 40 grand, which is good, but you can't really retire on 40 grand. You know, it's not enough money. Then she goes to pursue a degree in journalism at the University of Rhode Island, but she left after her junior year. Now, I've never really thought of University of Rhode Island as a good place to get an MRS degree. You know, names that come to mind would be University of Texas at Austin, uh, Barvard Law School, or ITT Tech. Just saying. So then she works as an admin assistant and also for Vogui magazine. Sometime in 2015, she was the CEO of Degree 180, a marketing agency that also had a blog which was anti-conservative and mocked Trump's penis. So she must have read a lot of Freud because, you know, they say Freud was pretty firm and hard-headed on these issues. He was also kind of a madman, but some people say he was a nice guy who donated to charity, so we can't really criticize him. And she said in one article, the batshit crazy antics of the Republican Tea Party. The good news is they will eventually die off. And we can get along with the obvious social change that needs to happen immediately. Every generation has this mentality like they're somehow leaving everyone else behind to die because they have the right position. But as you see, history is not always linear. And it tends to uh, swing back sometimes violently. Well, then she does this startup called Social Autopsy, 
which was basically if you made negative comments about her or in general negative comments it would build a profile of you which could then be tracked and you know rightly so there was a lot of rage over this people said it's kind of orwellian creepy and she attributed the criticism mainly to progressives so she got a lot of support from guys like milo yiannopoulos and this dude who wrote a self-help book called the beta provider mindset so that you could you should check that one out he's kind of interesting he's got a very manly voice and she said I became a conservative overnight. I realized that liberals were actually the racists. <laughs> I thought that was a meme. I didn't realize people took it seriously, but eh, what can you do? And so she does that whole walk away movement. And I just remember that being filled with so many insincere attention whores, just people making videos because they wanted to get their minutes of fame. It's like, look, it's really not revolutionary that you're voting for a different political party. You know, if that's what you believe, okay, express it. But trying to make this huge story like it's, you know, dramatic, I, I find it kind of hilarious. Now, going back quickly to the social autopsy thing, I thought it was interesting because we had that case of the kooky woman in New York who did stupid things on camera. And the modern culture, you know, the social cockroaches, the Twitter people, they're not content to just destroy a person's reputation. They go and they harass the company. They put out all the, the personal information to ensure that she loses her job. And I guess the whole notion is that because we don't have a really luxurious welfare state, you're like, oh, you got to be like us. You know, progressives tend to be low IQ and low income, so I guess they want you to uh, wallow in the same misery. I always think of those folks in San Francisco, like the homeless ones, you know. If we have to sit here and poo, then you're going to do it too. Eh, you know, just an idea. So, going back to it, she did the Blexit thing. She was part of, you know, uh, Red Pill Black or whatever. And I get a lot of comments from her like, or people who support her. They're like, oh yeah, she's a 10 out of 10. Like, uh, not on the IQ front, personally. Eh, there's a lot of people I would say that about. But, you know, she's a decently attractive girl. Me, personally, I would prefer, like, Missande from Game of Thrones or, uh, who is the other one? Uh, David Bowie's wife with a slightly shorter neck would be pretty ideal. But my point is, for most people in this type of position, she had a little bit of celebrity. She probably would have, at best, gotten a Fox News contributorship and faded into irrelevance. I mean, unless she went into politics. She's not super intelligent, as I said. She made the argument that Hitler was a globalist, which I guess if you, you believe in pan-Germanism as globalism, then you might be right. But uh, I've never found her to be particularly uh, engaging. It just seemed like she was using the typical Republican talking points about how, well, if we only voted Republican, things would be fine. It's like, Republicans do some screwed up things as well. I don't know if you realized it. And a lot of them don't even appreciate what Trump has tried to accomplish because Trump's not a traditional Republican in most cases. But that all aside, she didn't let her story end. Right? This is an indigo prophecy. What she managed to pull off is very similar to Meghan Marker, although she's a little bit younger, so you have to give props to that as well. Or I, I give marker I give marker higher praise because she did it when she was older. At any rate, she started dating and then she married last year this guy called George Farmer. You guys are like, yeah, MAGA peas and carrots. No, not that type of farmer. He's the son of Michael Farmer. And you're like, yeah, GMOs. No. So Michael Farmer is a member of the British House of Lords, and prior to that, he built a very successful precious metals trading firm. And his net worth is over 150 million pounds. So you think, oh, that means he's fat positive. No, 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 not exactly. It means that he's, he's rich by UK standards. In American terms, it's like $183 million from XE currency converter. So she married a guy who's set to inherit, I think he's one of three kids. So you're talking about probably at least 50 million pounds, all right? This is a smart chick. She knows how to use her connections. She knows how to use her minimal celebrity to an advantage. And you have to recognize that, whether you love it or you hate it, you know. 
I do think it's kind of funny how the, you know, head of the black conservative movement, she didn't marry a true black conservative like maybe Tim Scott or Clarence Thomas or Itchy Cube or maybe Faison Love. She went and married some lily white UK uh, filthy rich dude. I just think that's hilarious in a way. Um, how people, you know, how people actually go after the money. But that being said, the reason I point this out, we're going to see more of this. People like to make comments like, eh, women have low IQ, they can't do anything right. <laughs> well, they understand at least emotional intelligence well. They know how to uh, work their way through certain relationships quite effectively. And you're seeing this because it explains why, despite people claiming there's a wall, you have overweight women, single mothers, women who aren't particularly attractive, who can still snag guys. Maybe not multimillionaires, but they're getting dudes who are, um, you know, six-figure salaries, houses paid off. There was some article in Huffington Post about this woman. She fell in love with a Trump supporter, and she was not particularly attractive. But she got this dude who is like a surgeon or something, super rich. I'm thinking, that guy could have anyone. Well, hell, you got to give credit to these women where it's due because they know how to work, uh, work relationships, work connections, whatever. So whether you like it or you hate it, you have to recognize that economic dating, it exists, and it's just going to continue to become a more prevalent dynamic, especially in the age of social media.